hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Mr. Warren, always start your videos off with your hola. And you know, it's just a habit I cannot break. Maybe I can come up with a new intro. Hey, well, welcome, my friends, to yes, another math video. Ooh, yeah, loving math. Anyway, we are looking at lesson 7.6. Yes, on your FM dial. Just kidding. And here, look at our topic. Woo! Fraction multiplication. Yes, I do love multiplying my fractions. And look at what our essential question is. How do you multiply fractions? That's a great question. I like that the essential question is moving us along. This is our learning target, my friends, and we're going to be using an area model as we learn how to multiply fractions. All right. But you know, like we always say, we can't do any of that unless we unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. It's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Yes, it says Sasha has three-fifths of a scarf left to knit. If she finishes one half of that today, how much of the scarf will Sasha knit today? Ooh, yeah. I'm liking it. And it shows her that we're going to be finding one half of three-fifths. So let's make sure that we understand what is being asked of us. What are we trying to find? Well, it's usually embedded in the question, right? Of course, how much of the scarf Sasha will knit today? So she's done three-fifths. My benchmark tells me that's just a little bit more than half. It says if she does half of it today, how much of that scarf will she actually do today? So letting us know it's one half of that three-fifths amount. Over here, it says we have some questions. Yes, some good guiding questions. How much of the scarf does Sasha have left to knit? And that we know because it gives that information and it says that it's three-fifths of a scarf left to knit. So let's write that down. There we go, three-fifths. And then it says of the fraction that is left, how much will she finish today? And it's telling us in the problem if she finishes one half of that today. And that, my friends, is going to be one half. There we go. So one way is to use a model, which is what we're going to be doing today. It's a shade, three-fifths of the model, yellow. Okay, I think we could do that. There we go. I say that's three-fifths because I see five equal pieces. That denominator is letting me know that it's been divided into five equal pieces, and I have shaded three-fifths of them. It says draw a horizontal line across the rectangle to show two equal parts. We're looking for that two equal parts because of our one-half. All right, I can do that. I don't know. I would say that looks about one half. All right. Oh, I love this. It's so much fun. Okay, shade one half of the yellow sections blue. Okay, my good blue on blue, dude. Okay, Mr. War, get focused. All right, so here's my blue. I didn't want to put it in yet because I wanted you to see the magic of mathematics. That's right, magic. Watch the magic. Dun 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 Woo! Yeah, Mr. War turns yellow to green. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. That, my friends, is called, well, it's just called green. It's a color green. So we know that yellow and blue, yeah, makes green. It just works out really nice. Well, this is count the sections that are shaded twice. Well, we do have a section that's shaded twice, but we can actually say shaded green. And write a fraction for the parts of the whole that are shaded twice. Or green. And I see three sections, and I see a total of two, four, six, eight, ten sections. So would that be three tenths? I think so. Woohoo! Now let's just compare. The numerator and denominator of the product with the numerators and denominators of the factors. Describe what you noticed. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. I'm comparing my numerators. Okay, yeah. And I'm comparing my denominators. Okay, give me a second. Okay. Oh, I see what's going on here. That's right. Can't put this one past Mr. War. I am wide awake. That's right. I see 1 times 3 equals 3, and 2 times 5 equals 10. Wow, it's the numerator of the answer. It's the product of the numerators of the factors. That's right, and the denominator of the answer is the product of the denominators of the factors. Wow, what an eye-opener. Okay, you know what, my friends? I need to write that down. And there you go, my friends. 
Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay, it says yet another way. Oh, there is our friend Sasha knitting her scarf. Yeah. Howdy there, Sasha. Boy, you got a lot of different colors going on in that scarf. Very cool. Look at the focus. Boy, she is focused. Way to go. I give you a class dojo point if you were in my class. Now, continue on. Another way. Use paper and pencil. That's right, the old-fashioned way. There's something to keep in mind as we address these common core standards. Drawing the models, conceptualizing, making a picture. All that's about getting a deeper understanding of what we're learning. That's all. It's a way of showing that, yes, I get how math kind of, how it's connected together, where the patterns are. Now what we're going to be doing is moving more of the algorithmic kind of situation where we're just going to show you the algorithm. And that's what an algorithm is, kind of that basic calculation. So it says you can multiply fractions without using a model. It says multiply the numerator. So you see 1 times 3, so we have 1 times 3. We have 2 times 5. That's what we just did earlier. We're going to multiply the denominators. Okay, and that gives us that. And now we have 3, and now we have 10. We have our 3 tenths since we had up there at the top. So Sasha will knit, you guessed it, my friends, you're so smart. Three tenths of the scarf today. I know. I, I think I heard you. That's right, because you guys are involved. You're engaged. You're looking at this going, yes, Mr. Wara, I like math now. Yeah, math is fun. I do reckon it's time for Page Master. Woo, yeah. What do we have here? It says connect. Remember, you can write a whole number as a fraction with a denominator of one. That is so important. You know, my friends, and some of you may say, you know what, Mr. Wara? You already taught us that. Example, it says find four times five twelfths. Write the product in simplest form. When we mean simplest form, we mean that we've divided out all common factors from the numerator and the denominator, giving us uh, an answer that's in the most reduced form. All right, 4 times 5 12 is equal to, and they're showing us the 4, and then that's what they wanted to put that 1, right? Because they're letting us know that any whole number can always be represented as 4 over 1, because when you think about it, that fraction bar just means divided by. So we have 4 divided by 1 equals 4. So we really, in essence, how I love that expression, in essence, we have not changed the value. Now, we have 4 times 5. I have to look at these boxes carefully because GoMath does model this very, very well for you. I call this a scaffold. You're being scaffolded here to make sure you understand. So I'm going to put this, and I'm actually rewriting this the way that all these boxes are. And now it looks over here. I have 20 because 4 times 5 and over 12. And am I going to rewrite that again? I am. <laughs> okay. So now I have 20 over 12. Now 20 and 12, they do. They have a common factor. Right? They have a common factor of 2 because 20 and 12 are both divisible by 2. What do I mean by divisible? Divisible by 2 means that I can divide 20 by 2 and not get a remainder. It's like a nice number. And we know that the divisibility rule for 2 is the number just has to be even. So any number that ends in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8 is considered uh, divisible by 2. So. But if I look carefully, I can see that there's actually a larger factor than just 2. There's 4. So 20 divided by 4 and 12 divided by 4, you can see that's going to work out nice. We're going to end up with 5 over 3. Now, of course, 5 thirds is in simplest form, but we tend to write it as a mixed number as well. Is the answer reasonable? Explain. Well, let me see. Does that seem reasonable? When I look at my problem, sometimes it might be hard for you guys to understand because you're looking at the number 5 twelfths and the number 4. But think of it this way. We have 5 twelfths, which is almost a half. Okay? We're making four copies of that 5 twelfths. I think what would make this to make sense for me is almost reversing these two around, thinking 5 twelfths kind of of 4. Because 5 twelfths is about a half, and what's half of 4? It's almost two, right? Half of, of four is two. And you can see our one and two thirds is pretty close to two. That would be the most reasonable way I could check that answer. But anyways, we did come up to this answer of five thirds. So let's write that down. Or one and two thirds. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on down. Bring it on down, 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 down. Okay, now. 
try this. Okay, evaluate C times 4 fifths. And it says 4C equals 2 over 2. Oh my goodness, what a problem. Mrs. Moro, you're breathing. Slow down. Relax. It's okay. We're just going to take this little baby steps. Okay, evaluate is, in a sense, asking us to kind of solve conclusion we can make. Evaluate's a tricky word when I try to describe math because evaluate does suggest that you're going to get the answer. And evaluate does suggest that we're going to get the answer. I would say, in this case, it's to solve. We're going to put in the value here of C, which is 2 over 2, to solve this problem. So what is another way to write the value of C? In this case, it says C equals 2 over 2. Well, you guys are good at this by now, right? 2 over 2, well, it's just 2 divided by 2, which is 1. Numero uno. Woohoo! Now, what happens when you multiply a whole number by 1? Yeah, the product is the value of that whole number. Are we supposed to write that in here? Let's write that in here. So the product, okay, so in this case here, we have 2 over 2. That's what we're doing. So we're going to replace C in the expression with 2 over 2. Multiply the numerator. All right, let's get our 2, and our, our two over 2 again. And we're going to multiply our numerators first. Those are the numbers. That's numerators and numbers on the top. I mean, how many parts of that whole are either shaded? In this case, we have 8. And then here we have 10 because 2 times 5 is 10. Oh, we already multiplied the denominators. What do you notice about the product? Okay. That's a great question. Do I need to write something more here? Maybe I do. Oh, that is 8 tenths. Oh, we need to put this back in simplest form. I'm assuming equals. Yeah. Oh, well, you know what? That's what I'm noticing. Look at that. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Oh, they're equivalent fractions. The product here is equal to 4 fifths. It, nothing changed. Okay, in this product, the product is equal to 4 fifths. So it's just an equivalent fraction. We didn't change anything. And this is multiplying C times 4 fifths is equal to 4 fifths. Okay, that's what we got when C is equal to 2 over 2. This is just the identity property of multiplication. And that just suggests that if you have any number multiplied by 1, you get that number. Sometimes they, they, they phrase it like A times 1 will always equal A. And in this case, that's what we're doing. Anywho, moving on, it says mathematical practice number three. Should we take a look at mathematical practice number three? I say, yeah. And here we go. Mathematical practice three suggests that we're going to construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. Okay? And that means it's okay. We can say to our math partner, you know, I agree with you or I concur with your reasoning on this particular math problem. Or you can say, I respectfully disagree with your statement and this is why. Okay, so that's what this is about. It says, I can make conjectures and critique the mathematical thinking of others. Okay, I can construct, justify, and communicate arguments by considering the context maybe of the problem, using examples or ones that aren't examples, objects, drawings, diagrams. You can show pictures that way. And then it says, I can critique the reasoning of others by listening. Oh, really important to hear that. Comparing arguments, identifying flawed logic. Suggesting that sometimes one may say something that's not based in logic where it's going to make sense. And of course, asking questions to clarify to improve arguments. Well, thank you, mathematical practice number three. Use reasoning. Will you get the same result if you multiply four fifths by any fraction with a numerator and a denominator that are the same digit? Explain. Great question. Great question, Go Math. You really did it. Well, I would actually have to say yes, because we know that any number divided by itself is going to always give you 1. So, I mean, if you had 2 over 2, which we had, 1 over 1, 3 over 3, 4 over 4, 5, 665 over 665. Okay, it's still going to give you 1. So, how would I explain that? Well, I would say a fraction, okay, with the same digit in the numerator and denominator, is equal to 1. And the product of a fraction multiplied by 1 is equal to the fraction. And there you go, as I just described. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Oh, what are you getting so excited for, Mr. Wara? It's the end of another video. Oh, my goodness. Hey, we can't cry. <laughs> it's like, like Santa not coming to town. Hey, you know what, my friends? We are going to be back 
I promise you that we will be back and with another math video. Okay, my friends, thank you so much again for joining me in this wonderful lesson about multiplying fractions. I hope you learned a lot now. Live long and prosper.